Oh, come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise right now. Jesus, we love you. Hallelujah. Yeah. Come on, he's a mighty God. He's an awesome God. He's worthy of the praise. Hallelujah. It's good to be back in Victoria at the Jesus Church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to try to hasten to the Word of God, but I do want to take a moment to say thank you to Pastor Sister Rankin for the invitation to be here. We are honored to stand here again. We were excited. We've been anticipating this day for several days now, and uh, hallelujah. I like what I feel. I like what I see. Brother Dustin, don't give up. Okay. I walked on the platform, and I looked over there at you, and the Lord said, tell him, don't give up. There's some things trying to come against you and discourage you and get you to quit. But don't quit. Okay. Hallelujah. Church, if I get bogged down today, just bear with me, okay? My God. Hallelujah. If you have your Bibles, and would turn with us to the book of 2 Kings, chapter number 7. According to my records, I have not preached this here. But knowing me, I probably preached all over it at some point, so if I did, just, just, you get to hear it again, okay, because I, the Lord won't let me get away from it right now, so give honor to my beautiful bride, my, my I, you know, the saying says better half, but she's really the, the whole, I mean, without her, I'm nothing, so, hallelujah, <laughs> Hallelujah. 2 Kings chapter 7, verse number 1. Then Elisha said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, Tomorrow about this time shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel, two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. Then the Lord on whose hand the king leaned, answered the man of God and said, Behold, if the Lord would make windows in heaven, might this thing be? And he said, Behold, thou shalt see it with thine eyes, but shalt not eat thereof. There were four leprous men at the entering in of the gate. And they said one to another, Why sit we here until we die? If we say we will enter into the city, then the famine is in the city, and we shall die there. And if we sit still here, we die also. Now therefore come, and let us fall into the host of the Syrians. If they save us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall but die. Skipping down one more verse, verse 16. And the people went out. Everybody say the people. And spoiled the tents of the Syrians. So a measure of fine flour was sold for a shekel. And two measures of barley for a shekel. According to the word of the Lord. I want to preach this morning with the help of the Holy Ghost on this subject. The surplus in the spoil. 
Don't get all quiet on me now. The surplus in the spoil. Hallelujah. You may be seated. I also want to say it's good to see Brother and Sister Few sitting over there. Hallelujah. Our cousins, we saw them Wednesday night in Alto, and they said they were coming to Victoria this morning. And today we started chuckling. I said, well, sorry, you, get, you got to listen to me again. <laughs> Hallelujah. The passage that we begin reading and you're hearing, in order to get a clear understanding of what is taking place, we have to go back to the previous chapter. Uh, we find many things going on in these few chapters prior to this. Um, a whole lot of things I get bogged down in, and I'm going to do my best not to. Hallelujah. Uh, but we do see that in uh, 2 Kings chapter 6, verse number 24, it says, And it came to pass after this that Ben-Hadad, king of Syria, gathered all his host and went up and besieged Samaria. And there was a great famine in Samaria. And behold, they besieged it until an ass's head was sold for fourscore pieces of silver and the fourth part of a cab of dove's dung for five pieces of silver. We read here that their enemy was besieging their city to the point that there was no food left. Now, we often equate famine with uh with a dearth or a lack of harvest. But I personally believe that what the writer is trying to make clear to us is that this was not just a, a famine because of lack of rain. This was not just that there was no crops, uh, that there were no uh, livestock to harvest. That This was a famine that was induced and created by the besieging from their enemies. This was a famine that was brought upon this nation and this people because the enemy had come in and began to take things from them. The enemy had come in and begun to, to plunder and pillage through their villages and their towns and their cities. The enemy had sent his armies in to the, to the nation of Israel and said, you know what, we're going to come into your households and we're going to raid your pantries and, and we're going to take from your cellars and, and we're going to take all of the fruits of your labor. Hallelujah. Oh, help me right now, Jesus. You know what? Uh, I believe I'm talking to some folks this morning that the enemy is coming to you some of your life uh, and some of your lives and he's begun to take some things from you. Well, oh no, Brother Long, we're living victorious lives. I know we are, and we say that very often, but how many times do we really look at it and in so many ways there's a famine in our life because the enemy has come in and he's begun to take things from us. He comes in and begins to steal our joy. He comes in and begins to steal our faith. He comes in and begins to take all these things from us. And we turn around one day and we're wondering, where, where did it go? Why is it I have no food to eat? Why is it that there's nothing for me to partake of? Oh, I came to tell somebody, sometimes it's not that there's a lack of rain that's bringing harvest, but sometimes it's because we allow the enemy to come into our household and to take some things from us. We allow fear to come into our minds and to remove belief in God from us. We allow some, some things from the enemy to come into our life and begin to steal and to, to kill and to destroy. Oh, hallelujah. This famine was not just something that was produced because of lack of rain and harvest but it was something that was produced because the enemy came against them to the point that there was nothing left in the city. There was no normal food to eat in the city. There was nothing left for them to partake of to the point that their appetite they began to crave things that were unnatural for them to eat. Now, we're going to go somewhere and hype this up in a little bit, okay? It's Sunday morning, I know, but we're going to have a Sunday night church by the time we're over, done with this thing, okay? But early this morning, as I was sitting in that hotel room, reading my Bible and on my phone, because I was trying not to make too much racket, turn on too many lights, wake up the boys, praise God. The Holy Ghost began to deal with me and tell me that I needed to tell somebody, you've got to be careful what your appetite is. 
You've got to be cautious and guard your appetite. Yes, sir. They were never intended to eat dove's dung. They were never intended to eat donkey heads. It was never intended by God that we partake of some things because there's some things that we ingest that begin to wreak havoc within our bodies. Can I preach that there's some things we begin to ingest spiritually that begin to wreak havoc in our spirits. There's some things that we set our eyes on and we begin to feast on some things and gnaw on some things that God never intended for us to partake of. You see, when there's a famine in the land, there's nothing to eat. You begin to grasp at anything you can. You begin, oh, that's why the world world will try everything you can imagine I, I hear some of these drugs and I think why in the world would you want to try this stuff why in the world you can look around and see the results and the effects of it why would you want to try it let me tell you why they're reaching for something because they're hungry there's a burning desire inside of them for something to eat and everything they reach for all it's really doing is consuming them can I tell somebody this morning you've got to be careful what your appetite is you can't expect to go out and in this world and partake of everything this world has to offer and come in the house of God and feel the presence of God. It doesn't work that way because you can't hunger for the things of God and hunger for the things of this world at the same time. You've got to look at your appetite and say what is it I'm craving? Why am I craving it? Uh. And before you start pointing your finger at the preacher. Well, glory, don't get ahead of me, Brother Rankin. Don't get ahead of me, okay? There's some things that we feast on that it ain't the preacher's fault. He's trying to bring the fresh bread. Oh, I feel like I need to reiterate something right now. Church, you better thank God for a pastor who's willing to stand behind this pulpit and tell you this is what the Word of God says. Like it or lump it, you can leave it if you want to. You know, we come in the house of God and we act like a bunch of little kids. We come in the house of God hungry for for Smarties and, and, and now and laters and, and Skittles and M&M's and, and Snickers bars. And the, the preacher gets up and gives us a T-bone steak. And we say, well, I'm not hungry for that, so I'm not going to take it. Uh, I can already tell I'm going to make somebody mad today. Hallelujah. I know it. That's why I told you don't let it bother you. If all you hunger after is carnality and a feel good, you know what? And, 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 look, I'm not pointing fingers at anybody, okay? Right now, please. I'm talking about me and my wife, okay? We, she eats a whole lot better than I do. I cheat a whole lot. But I find when I cheat, I feel the effects of it in my body. When I partake of things that taste so good. You, you know, you, you got Texas Roadhouse here in town. I'm a sucker. And I can put away a basket of those rolls so fast. You'll wonder what in the world happened to them. But I know if I eat too much of that, I'll be driving down the road later miserable because I'll feel the effects of it in my body. But because my appetite was for something that would not, it tastes good in the moment. It feels okay in the moment. But there comes a point in time down the road, I'm looking at myself saying, what happened to me? Why are my clothes too little? You know what? It's not the role's fault. It's my fault. Some of you need to realize it ain't the preacher's fault. He's been giving you fresh bread. He's been giving you T-bones. He's been giving you nourishment, everything you need to take and eat. Oh, but you've been looking at it and saying, well, I'm not hungry for that today because that doesn't make me feel good. That doesn't make... Uh, 
Oh, y'all better buckle up. It's, we're going to be here a little while if this keeps up. You can't crave the things of the world and expect to come to the house of God and have a move of God. You can't crave the things of the world and then come in the house of God and say, well, God, I need you to touch my body today. I need you to change this circumstance in my life. That's not the way it works. Let me tell you, I'm going to take a sidetrack here to the book of Daniel for a moment and ruin another good message. Let me tell you about some Hebrew boys who they were in the presence of the Babylonian king and the king said, hey, go feed them and make sure they get a portion of the king's meat. Make sure they get a portion of what I want them to eat. And they stood up and said, hold on. If we found favor in your sight, let us just have pulse for a few days. And if at the end of this season, you look at us and tell us who's healthier, us or the other dudes in this camp. They had the right appetites. And they were healthier and more pleasing to the king. But then it came time to bow. And because they said, we're not going to eat the king's meat. We're going to eat what we're supposed to be eating. They had the strength to stand when everybody else would bow. You can I, I, I'm not trying to preach doom and gloom here, but I feel like I need to say something in the Holy Ghost. There's coming a day where the, the world and society and government's going to try to get us to bow. They're going to try to get us to bow to their idols and bow to their images. They're going to try to get us to take the mark of the beast. And if you don't learn how to eat right now spiritually, there's going to come a day where you'll bow. You'll cave under the pressure of it and you'll give in to every carnal thing this world has to offer. Let me tell somebody, if you want to stand in the last day. You've got to partake of the right things. You've got to feast on the right things. You've got to eat what is right in the sight of God. My wife and I were talking just yesterday. We were out walking and exercising and we were talking about, you know, social media and how much time we actually spend scrolling through social media. You know what? We're trying to start limiting our time because there's a whole lot of mess on there. There's a whole lot of junk on there. You need to limit your time looking at that stuff. Oh, help me right now, Jesus. Now notice, it didn't take long with this famine on, on, on hand that these two women started to try to feast on their own children. Now I'm going to be real careful right now, but I feel like I need to say some things. Because these two women were so hungry that they were willing to kill their own children. They were willing to sacrifice their own kids and to feast on them. You say, Brother Long, that's, that's disgusting. That's nasty. We'd never do that. Well, maybe not in that actual sense, but how many times do we see this swirl? Hey, yeah, go, go play ball. Go, go play ball. You'll be the next star. You'll be... Oh, I'm bump oh, somebody's getting upset with me. I can feel it right now in this place. You don't get mad at me. I'm just telling you what you're doing. You're trying to live vicariously through your children, and you're trying to push them to a place, and all you're doing is pushing them into a world that will consume them and chew them up and spit them out. Let me tell you, you want your kids to be successful? You get them in the house of God. You get them here on Friday night prayer. You keep them in the house of God. You get them involved in the kingdom of God. You want... Oh, uh, yeah, I know what it is. Well, I wish I could have been involved in ball like this when I was a kid, so I'm going to let my kids do it. You know what? We had a teacher at Bible college, Brother Woodford, used to say, everything you do may not be right or wrong, but everything you do will lead you in a direction. The problem with it is, it's all, it's just innocent t-ball, and it teaches them team building skills. I've heard all that malarkey before. 
You want to teach your kids team building skills? You teach them how to get in the prayer room and join up with their brothers and sisters in the Lord and pray the prayer of faith and see God do miracles. You want to teach them team building skills? Get them involved in a Bible quiz program where they learn the word of God and they... Uh, you asked for it. Come on, there's a spirit trying to draw some of you away with carnality. You need to get your eyes off the television. Or can I say it the way it really ought to be said, the television. And get your eyes off of Hollywood. And I pray God save all those people out there. I pray God reach down and shake their world and pull them out of the degradation of sin. But let me tell you, church, you can't crave the things of Hollywood and crave the things that this world has to offer and expect to come in here and God do miracles in your life. It doesn't work that way. You've got to get your appetite right. We as the church of the living God have got to get our appetites correct. We've got to crave the word of God. We've got to crave the spirit of God. We've got to need this more than my necessary food. I need this more than I need anything. I need more of Jesus. I don't need more money in the bank. I need more spirit. I don't need more food in the pantry. I need more of God. (laughs) Brother Rankin, this famine, I believe, was self-inflicted. Because all it would have taken was the king of Israel gathering up the army and saying, go out there and stand guard and make sure they don't come in. Right, right, right. Come on, brother. Talk to it. They allowed the enemy to come in and to take things from them. But I got good news for you, okay? Prophet Elijah, Elisha stands up and begins to make a proclamation prophetically. We read in your hearing, he says, Tomorrow about this time shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. Now this sounds crazy. There's no barley to be had in the town. there's There's nothing anywhere. They're so hungry, they're feasting on anything they can find. They're partaking of things that are unnatural to partake of. Uh, I feel like the Lord's not going to let me move on yet. In Romans, it says they're they're without natural affection. They turn the truth of God into a lie. You know, and this is, the writer of Romans says, neither were thankful. You know what I believe one of the biggest plagues of the apostolic movement is? Is we forgot how to be thankful. Well, I got a couple amens on that. Unthankfulness is a sin. Romans says because of their unthankfulness, God gave them up to vile affections. Can I remind somebody? We got to be thankful. We've got to learn what it is to be thankful. Oh, brother, no, you don't understand. I've been sick all week. I don't got no money in the bank. I can't be sick. That's a bunch of, bunch of hogwash. Come on. We've got to learn how to be thankful. Yes, Unthankfulness is an unnatural desire. God created us to be thankful. The psalmist said, be thankful unto him and bless his name. We've got to learn what it is to be thankful. The 
The prophet stands up and makes this proclamation. And everybody's looking around saying, how in the world is this going to come to pass? How is this going to take place? In fact, one of the men that worked in the palace there said, hold on a minute. How is this, where is this coming from? And the prophet spoke to him and said, you're going to see it, but you're not going to get to partake of it. Came to tell somebody, you better be careful what you say. Because God will let you see some things, but he won't let you partake of it. And so we find these four leprous men. These four leprous men at the entering in of the gate, they are outcasts of society. Because of the sickness and disease in their body, they're not allowed to go inside the city. And here they are sitting outside the gate. They've been afflicted by this famine just like everybody else because they have nothing to eat. And finally, one of them looks over at another one and says, hey, why are we just sitting here? Why sit we here until we die? I know there's a famine everywhere, but why are we just sitting right here? We might could do something about this. If we say we'll enter into the city, the famine's in the city. We'll die there. If we sit right here, we're going to die anyways. We got leprosy. At some point, it's going to take over and consume our life. We're going to die. We might as well do something. They said, now therefore come, let us fall into the host of the city. Why don't we just go on into the enemy's camp? Yes, sir. Because we're going to die anyway, so who cares if they kill us over there? Right. See, when you get hungry enough, you start to realize you're willing to fight for some things. These four lepers said, you know what? We're going to die anyway, so we might as well die fighting. We might as well die trying to get some things that can sustain us and keep us. We might as well die going on into the enemy's camp and getting us something to eat. I love this last phrase. It says, if they save us alive, we'll, we'll live. And if they kill us, we shall but die. You got to understand, unless the Lord calls you out in the rapture, at some point you're going to die anyways. So why are you trying to partake of things that are going to kill you? Why are you feasting on bitterness? It's just going to kill you. Why are you feasting on anger? It's just going to kill you. You need to get in the house of God and get in the presence of God and have the right kind of appetite so you can feast on the right things. You know what? You might die a physical death, but you'll still be caught up in the rapture. You might, if you get your appetite right, if you get it straight, my God. So they rose up. They said, we're not just going to sit here till we die. We're going to do something about this. Now, I don't know how it went down. When I looked over at his, brother, his friend, he said, you know what, I'm hungry. I ain't had anything to eat in two or three days. And hardly had a sip of water. I need something to eat. Why don't we just go down to, there to the camp of the Syrians and ask them if they'll get it? They'll all be afraid of us anyways. We're, we're lepers. Maybe they'll have pity on us. So they started making their way down to the camp of the Syrians at twilight. And the Bible says that the Lord had made the host of Syrians fled, a flee, because they heard the noise of chariots and of horses, even the noise of a great host. These four men, God amplified their footsteps and made it sound like there was a whole army coming to the camp. And the Syrians began to flee. So when these four lepers got there, they said, hold on, there's nobody in the camp. Verse 7 says, wherefore they arose and fled in the twilight and left their tents and their horses and their asses, even the camp as it was, and fled for their life. 
They were so scared that they began to run. Now, we often read over this and we kind of gloss over and pass over some, some important details right here because the Bible says they left the camp as it was. It's twilight. They've been out pillaging and plundering all day. They come back to camp. They're hungry. They took some chickens from somebody down the road, and so they begin to roast some chickens. Now, I'm going to get a little funny right here, but it's the truth, okay? One of them was craving, craving some steak, and so they begin to butcher that, that, that cow they had taken from somebody down the road, and, and they begin to roast some steak over the fire. But the Lord doesn't say that. It says they left the camp even as it was. They didn't move anything from its place. The fires are still burning. Dinner's still cooking. There's still some bread over on the side and some wine skins over there full of good fresh wine. And there, 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 there's, there's some milk in a flask over there. And there's an apple pie sitting over there. And there's a chocolate cake over there. You know, Brother Long, you're getting silly. I know some of you need to laugh anyways. And the, the, everything is still there that these, the, the enemy was preparing to eat. Everything they were preparing to do was still sitting around. And I believe these four lepers began to look around. And one of them walked into a tent and said, My, my, God has blessed me today. There's a T-bone steak on the fire. I think I'm going to have me a feast right now. And there were some potatoes down in the coals. And he said, I'm going to take up. Right, right, right. Oh, Brother Long, you're crazy. I know. Y'all know I'm crazy. Uh, somebody needs to get it today. Now, you got to understand. The Syrians didn't just besiege Samaria. They had been going through the whole country besieging cities. I personally believe that when those lepers started walking in some of those tents, they started finding gold and silver and jewels from other countries, from other places. They began to find things that they knew weren't from their town. And they're sitting there having a good old time, eating some dinner, getting some food. They're feasting there in the tents. And finally one of them says, hey, you know what? Maybe we ought to go tell the people in the city. There's food out here. So they run in. They holler out at the porter of the king's gate. They tell him, hey, the Syrians have fled and there's food to eat. There's, there's, there's things out there. And the king says, I don't know if I believe them or not, so I, I'm going to send a man. I'm going to send a couple of horses that are left. And, 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 and you, you go check it out and see if what they're saying is true. And they took, therefore, two chariot horses, and the king sent after the hosts of the Syrians, saying, go and see. And when they and they went after them unto Jordan, and lo, all the way was full. Now pay attention to this: was full of garments and vessels which the Syrians had cast away in their haste. The road was strewn with all of this stuff. I expect some of y'all to pick it up right now. They saw the path of the fleeing Syrians. By the fact that everywhere they went, they were dropping stuff. They were so scared. They were leaving things behind. They were so afraid. They're leaving things behind in the way. And the king said, hold on a minute. We, we, we're going to take advantage of this. And the messengers returned and told the king. And the Bible says the people went out. Now, our first inclination and first thought is that the, the, the king sent the army out to, to gather all this stuff in. No, that's not what the word says. The word of God says the people went out, people went out. and spoiled the tents of the Syrians. Yes, sir. And they got some fine flour. Yes, sir. And they got some barley. Yes, sir. And two measures of barley was sold for a shekel. And a measure of fine flour was sold for a shekel according to the word of the Lord. Now, we've got to understand in this that the Syrians were leaving things behind them. 
But the people of God, the, the, the people of Samaria came behind them in the way. And one of them was running down the road. And they say, you know what? That looks like my coat that was in my closet. And one of those Syrians came in my house and took it from me. And that looks like the cup that was in my cupboard. And they, they came and stole it from me. And one of them says, you know what? I think I had a can of Campbell's chicken noodle soup in my pantry. And I see it sitting right over there. And one of them says, oh. All right, I got to put it in more modern day spiritual terms for you. What I'm saying, you know what? I see some joy down there. I remember the day the enemy came in my house and took my joy. But I'm getting back today. Somebody in this house is going to get some laughter back today. Laughter doeth good like a medicine. Somebody in this house, you need to learn how to let go of some things and laugh a little bit. You take yourself too serious. It's okay to laugh and have fun. Well, that went over like a lead balloon. But Lord, what are you trying to tell us? I came to tell the Jesus church. The people went out and began to spoil the tents of the Syrians. But when they got in there, they just started to realize, you know what? That's my coat. But there's another coat here that will fit me too. Uh, the one I walked in and said, there's a little gold. I ain't never had any gold. I had some silver one time, but, but I've never had some gold. And there's silver and there's gold. So I think I'll take some of both. See, the surplus is in the spoil. I came to tell the Jesus church this morning. Oh, I feel a prophetic word on me right now. The surplus is going to be in the spoil. There's some things the enemy has taken from some of you. There's some souls that the devil has ripped out of this body of believers. There's some lives, some backslidden young people that the, the devil came in and pulled them out of this place. Let me tell you something. There's coming a day you're going to spoil the scent, the tents of the Syrians. Then you're going to take the spoil. But there's not just going to be a simple spoil. In the spoil, there's going to be a surplus. There's going to be more than you ever imagined. There's going to be more than you ever thought possible. I'm telling you right now, there is a revival of backsliders coming to the Jesus church. But it's not just going to be backsliders. There's going to be brand new babies coming with them. They're going to bring their cohorts. They're going to bring their friends in. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. There's a surplus in the spoil. Brother Aguilar, God's about to take care of the finances. The finances are about to be taken care of. You don't worry about it. You just take it to the bank in the spirit. God's about to meet the need. Boy, I know you got your work clothes on. I need you up here right now. Get over there by your brother. Where's little sis? She's in Sunday school? That's fine. That's good. That's good. That's good. There's some things that the enemy took from you too because of what you watched this man and that lady go through. I'm telling you, today, you're getting some things back. But you've got to go and take it. You've got to go and take it. 
And when you take hold of it and you reclaim it, say, no, devil, that's mine. You can't have it. God's going to give you more and more and more and more. There's an anointing that God wants to place on both of you young men to cause you to be soul winners. You see, I could never do that. I'm telling you in the Holy Ghost right now, there are souls that only you two will reach. Nobody else in this world can reach them. And if you've got to take some things back today, it's time to go to the camp of the Syrians and say, devil, you can't have it. You can't have my joy. You can't have my peace. You can't have my mind. I'm going to feast on the right things. Come on, somebody. There's a surplus in the spot. Brother Banker back there, you got your promotion yet? Keep holding on. It's coming. Don't get weary. You keep being faithful in the small things, and God's going to make you a ruler over many things. I'm not just running my mouth because something else came out of my mouth a few months ago either. I was on the platform of the Holy Ghost to tell him that promotion's still coming. Brother Cole, I don't like doing this. I don't like talking like this, okay? Hear me right now, church. If y'all want to tune me out right now, that's fine, okay? You've been gun shy about a relationship. God's about to send a lady in your life. You hear me right now. And you're going to know from the get-go, it's right. Okay, don't be discouraged and don't be afraid. You're going to know the moment you meet her, this is right. Church, I'm trying to shut down, okay? I'm trying to uh, I'm telling you, I walked on the platform this morning, and it was like boom, 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 boom. I said, God, you gotta help me remember all this, okay? to bind together with your sister-in-law. Okay. Y'all bind together. God's going to work some miracles in both of you. Hallelujah. 
See, it's Sister Allison. Is that right? Don't get caught up in all the psychology stuff, okay? There's something a whole lot deeper that God's trying to call you to. I'm a graduate from Texas Bible College, and I'm not knocking it at all. If I'm out of line, Pastor Rankin, you pull my coattail and set me down. Sis, I feel like I'm supposed to tell you in the Holy Ghost, there's a level of prayer that God wants to call you to, and they can't teach you how to do it there. There is more to life than all this right here. There's a place of intercessory prayer that God wants to call you to, but you're so caught up in your mind and everything they've taught you and everything. You can't reason some things out here. You've got to reason them some things out through prayer, and only the Holy Ghost reveals some things. It's time to get in prayer, sis. Brother, Brother Remax, real estate agent, you want to sell more houses? You got to commit 100% to this thing. You can't hold back any portion. Okay? I love you, and I'm not trying to be tough this morning. In the book of Acts, it tells us of some people who sold a piece of property, and they held back some of the money. I'm not saying you're holding back money, but I'm using this as an example. They, they were killed because they refused to give everything, and they lied about what they were giving. I'm not saying you're lying, okay? Please. If you'll commit 100% to God and you start scheduling them showings around church. Okay? I'm just telling you what I feel in the Holy Ghost. God's going to bless and the sales are going to double. Church, the surplus is in the spoil. You're going to go walking down the road and realize there's some things here that, yeah, that's from my house, but there's also some good blessings here that I never had, and, and, and God wants to bless me a little more. I came to tell somebody the surplus is in the spoil. I'm telling you, there's a financial blessing coming to this church. There is a financial miracle coming to this church. There's a surplus. You're going to look up one day and you're going to say, this is more than we ever needed to build. This is more than we ever needed to do the remodel. This is more than we ever needed. I'm telling you right now, church, the surplus is in the spoil. But you've got to go and take it. You It's time for somebody to get out of your pew and say, devil, I'm taking back everything you stole from me. I'm not going to let it lay there by the road. I'm taking it back. And while I take it back, I'm going to get back some extra blessings. I'm going to get back some extra because there's a surplus in the spoil. There's a surplus in the spoil. Oh, come on, somebody. I wish you would tell the devil, you can't have my joy. You can't have my laughter. You can't have my peace. I'm taking Taking it back. You can't have my children. I'm taking them back. You can't have oh my favor. I'm taking it back. Come on, you gotta get your appetite right. And when you get the appetite right, God can bless you with a spoil. God can bless you with a surplus. looking in the blue tie I don't want to embarrass you right now don't let the hurts of yesterday keep you back okay don't let the hurts of yesterday keep you from committing everything to God 
right now it feels okay. But there will come a day you regret it. If you don't give in to God right now. I'm not trying to be doom and gloom right now, okay? I'm just telling you what I feel in the Holy Ghost to tell you. I don't know you, but I love you. I love your spirit. There's a purity about you. But there's some things you've let go by the wayside. And it's time to pick it up. It's time to take it back today. And say, I'm going to lead my family in the truth and in the spirit of God. Church, I'm about to quit. You said, I don't know what this is, but it's been fretting you and worrying you. Sis, lift your hands right now. God's about to take care of it. Do it, Lord. Do it, Lord. In the name of Jesus, I command the pain to go. There's nothing wrong with you. There's nothing in your body except for healthy wholeness. In Jesus' name. Come on, the headaches are going to stop. The headaches are going away. In the name of Jesus, I command these migraine headaches to go. Come on, church. It's time to take back what the devil stole from you. It's time to get out and recognize and understand. I'm not going to let the army of the enemy keep my blessing. I'm going to take the spoil and I'm going to get this surplus. I'm going to get the extra blessing. I came to tell somebody there's a surplus in the spoil and it's time to take it back. It's time to take it back. Come on, reach out and get it this morning.
Sister Jen. The enemy. There's a direct correlation of the affliction of barrenness with the spiritual affliction of this church. If I'm out of line, Brother Rankin, you can send me down right now. Sis, there's about to be a release in your womb. And you watch what happens. There's going to be a release physically and there's going to be a release spiritually. And this place is going to explode with spiritual children. I'm telling you, you're about to break through a spiritual barrier. And when you do, there's going to be a physical sign of it. There's going to be a physical sign of it. Church, I'm telling you, there's more than just backsliders coming. I'm talking about brand new people, brand new babies that don't know anything about this. And they're going to come in and say, God, I'm tired of this world. I'm tired of living this life. And I'm ready to change everything. I tell you, don't get weary. You've been real tired lately. Wonder what in the world's going on. I'm sick of doing this. I'm sick of praying like this. I'm sick of pushing. Sis, don't get weary. Come on, payday is coming. Payday is coming. And I'm not just talking about him. Yeah, that's the ultimate payday, but payday is coming here. You're going to start to see some things take place. Sister Joy, you pray for his heart. It's a heart problem. You pray for his heart, and God's going to heal the wound. And there's going to be reconciliation. Sister Marty, don't let the devil shut your mouth. You hear me. When you go to the store, when you're walking through H-E-B buying groceries and you feel that little nudge, don't let the devil shut your mouth. You better open that mouth and start talking. God's going to put words in your mouth and you're going to be a light and a witness. If there's a spirit of intimidation that's trying to jump on your back and you've wanted to speak to people before and the devil got on your shoulder and said, you can't talk to them. You go ahead and open your mouth and watch what God does. Elders, if you're 65 and older, I need you to raise your hand right now. My God, there's a lot of young folks in this church. Hey, old folks, I'm not saying that in disrespect. I love you. It's time to pray like you ain't never prayed. It, let me take it a step further. If you're retired, lift your hand. You have the time that some of these young people don't have. It's time to pray until you get in the spirit. Don't stop short. It's time to get in the spirit and pray. We're, we're, we're nearing the end of time as we know it. 
There's no time to sit around and play games and be satisfied with a mediocre prayer. It's time to pray in the Holy Ghost and get in the Spirit till things begin to break. Elders? Well, I can't get out and dance and jump like you can pray. And if you don't know how to pray, there's only one way to learn. Get in there and do it. Now let me apply that to some of you young folks too. You might have to set the alarm an hour earlier to get up and have sufficient prayer time before you go to work. Church, if you could feel what I feel, this thing's about to explode. You're on the brink. Like, let me just tell you. It's like you're standing on the edge of the Grand Canyon right now. And you're getting ready to take a leap of faith. Spiritually, it's time to jump. Say, so God, there's nothing down there to catch me. Yeah, but it's a new depth in the spirit. It's somewhere you've never been before. Jesus Church in Victoria, Texas, get ready. God's about to blow your minds. Sis, I don't recognize you, don't know you. Family has brought some very dark things into your life. Very dark. Can I tell you that God has called you into the light so that the light of truth can shine into that darkness? It doesn't matter what mom and dad have been. The light that comes through you can shine into their darkness. Okay. He called you out of darkness into his marvelous light so that you can be the light. Don't let the darkness discourage you because there's a light shining. Brother Vincent? There's more contracts coming. I know the Holy Ghost already told you a few months ago, but you get ready, there's more coming. You get ready to hire some more employees. You get ready. The favor of God is upon you. They're going to offer you a regional position if they haven't already. They're going to offer you a higher position. You make it very clear up front that I have to be right here because this is where my church is. They're going to honor it and they're going to take care of you. Come on, church. I'm telling you, there's a surplus. There's more than you could ever imagine. Some of you still haven't grasped what I'm saying right now. There's more than you ever had in the spoil. But you've got to go and take the spoil. It wasn't just for the king and the army. The Bible says the people went out and spoiled the tents of the Syrians. The whole city fled out to the Syrians and to the camp and said, we're going to take back everything that was ours. But we're going to get back some things that we've never had. Come on, I'm telling you, there is extra there's a surplus and you're going to look up one day and say God I never dreamed we'd see people raised from the dead in this building and he's going to say well just watch just watch what I can do yes one more time I want you to lift your hands and I want you to begin to rejoice with everything that's within you 
I want you to rejoice not in what you see right now, but in what you know. Come on, I want you to tell the devil I'm taking it back right now. Come on, start to name it to him. Those things that he's taken from you and stole from you, start to tell him, I'm taking it back. I'm taking it back. Devil, you can't have it. I'm taking it back.
let's pray right here for just a few minutes. Let's pray. Let's talk to the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, talk to him right now. Hallelujah. Amen. God, I thank you tonight, today, Jesus. I don't feel like God is ready to shut this service down, but all you need right now is your voice. I want you to talk to him like the friend that he is. Oh, God, if I've been having cravings for the world, Come on, talk to him about it. Hallelujah, God. Amen. I'm ready to break off these cravings. I'm ready to get back in the Father's house. I'm ready to get back at the Father's table. I'm ready to find my place again, Lord, at the altar of repentance. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, just your voice. I'm pushing you right now just a little bit to lift up your voice. I'm telling you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, talk to the Lord. If you feel the Holy Ghost, pray in the Holy Ghost right now. Yanda la la bo ki yanda la la bo si yanda. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. I got to be in your plan, Lord. I got to be in your purpose. Come on, don't leave this service not right with the Lord. Don't leave this service not being able to be touched by his presence. I'm telling somebody, telling somebody in the Holy Ghost today, this is your opportunity. You hear me in the Holy Ghost, this is your opportunity. Do not let this moment pass you by thinking that you're going to have another opportunity. When God has already dropped down in this house. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, Brother Reagan, I ain't felt him in a long time. Yeah, but you can touch him in this service this morning. There's no reason that you leave with the same depression, the same addiction. I said there's no reason that you leave with the same bondage. <laughs> mm. That's it. Lift up your voice. God, 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 in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. I feel a little bit like somebody isn't taking advantage of the opportunity to this morning. If you want me to be honest with you. That's why I'm stalling the service. I don't feel like I have liberty to move on. I'm telling you here today. Do not leave this service if you're not right with the Lord. And if you haven't touched him here this morning. My God have mercy. There's no reason. There's no reason. God's here this morning. Hallelujah. He's here this morning. He's here this morning. <laughs> Call upon the Lord while He's near. While He may be found. God, stir us here today. Come on, have you let Him got to the depths of your heart this morning? Have you let him touch the depths of your spirit? Are you still in anger and bitterness this morning? Do you still have resentment after this message? After this move of God? That's not the will of God. He wants to free you here today. Mm. Jesus. <laughs> Oh, come on. When's the last time 
that you laid it at his feet. When's the last time? Well, Brother Rankin, if I'm honest, I've been so busy. I've been so caught up with life uh, that I really haven't let God touch me. Well, he's here today to touch you. You're going to be without excuse on the day of judgment. Hear me this morning. You're going to be without excuse because there was a Savior on this Sunday morning that sent a messenger to preach to you, that sent his spirit to touch you. God, God, in the name of Jesus, telling you church there's a I'm telling you God is not done in this house I'm telling you God is not done in this house God I don't know who you are here this morning but I'm telling you you have lived in the outer edges for too long you have lived on the outer edge too long God is calling you back to the center here today God is wanting to touch you God is wanting to touch you here today with a special touch of His Spirit. I'm telling you hell is going to be full of people that wasted opportunities in the presence of God they come with the temptation and they leave with the temptation they come with the burden and they leave with the burden I'm here to tell you today I know barrel is coming but God is also coming I'm telling you, you need a touch of God here today. You can shout around the altar and not ever let him touch you. I said you can pray and not ever let him touch you. God, with my whole heart. God, recenter me. God, come on, is there music that you need to go take out of your truck? Is there things that you need to remove off of your phone? Is there things that you need to get out of your house that is taking the place of prayer? That it's taking the place of reading your word? Hallelujah, has the enemy filled our lives with justifiable entertainment where we are carnal when we should be pliable in the hands of the king? (laughs) <laughs> I need thee. Oh, I need thee. God, I gotta have it today. Your prayer has got to be, God, I need you today, Lord. More than the air that I breathe, the water that I drink, the food that I eat. I need you today, Jesus.
If you can go for weeks at a time and not pray, you really need to examine if you're saved or not. Why? Because I need Him. Thank you, Brother Long, for preaching to us. Let me say this here this morning. I'm not ashamed to be apostolic. When God touched my life, He transformed my heart, my mind, my spirit. He transformed the inside, and He also transformed the outside. Like Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm not ashamed of being apostolic. Last night, me and my family, we went to go eat it. I'll be honest with y'all. I'm just going to be honest with you right here. There's really only three places to eat in Victoria. But before you move here, it presents itself as having more. There's Pinto Bean, Jason's Deli, and Texas Roadhouse. Outside of that, there's no other place to eat here. Okay, you and my, I'm in affordable. <laughs> Me and my wife, we were going to Pinto Bean last night. She said, you seem kind of mad. What's wrong? I said, I'll be honest with you, I am mad. I said, I'm mad because I don't have factor. I quit factor. I've quit it now for a week and a half. That when you have that pure, and look, I'm not trying to sell a factor. Trust me, I don't get paid off factor. I know there's some people think I get paid off factor. I've not got one penny. But I'm just telling you, when you start partaking of things in the world, the effects are immediate on your spiritual body. You're not going to go and partake in any type of thing in the world and not feel the effects after one day, two day, three day, four day, five days without praying and sitting in His presence. Whatever the reason is, if you stay out of His presence and you're not partaking of Him, you're not praying, you're not letting the Holy Ghost touch you during prayer, then we start partaking of things that looks like entertainment and leisure different things and before long we start feeling the effects of it but when I eat factor on a daily basis I feel so good I'm not I'm not I know that I know we're joking and laughing but I'm serious I feel so good it's the right portion I don't overeat I don't get cramps I don't get indigestion amen but then then I'm out of factor and the only option is water burger I'm just telling you, church, the house of God, the word of God, the presence of God, that's where you get your spiritual nourishment from. And we've got to fall in love with him like we have never fell in love with him. If it wasn't for the imminent hurricane and major things happening, I would have service tonight. I really would. Not because I feel like you have to have two services to be saved, but I want more of him. I want to grow in the knowledge and the wisdom of Jesus Christ. Amen. And what, what we have felt here today, what we have felt here today, you will never replace this feeling with any other thing. Can we just thank the Lord for a moment for what we felt here today? Thank Him for sending brother and sister Long back to us. God, thank you for what I have felt, God, and what I'm able to partake of. Thank you, Jesus. I worship you today, Lord. God, help our cravings today. Let us crave. Let us crave a prayer room. Let me ask you a question here this morning. I know that we come to church. I know that we pray. But do we crave church? Do we crave prayer? Because when you crave something, you're not going to be satisfied with anything less. It pushes you to find it. I'll never forget one time. I went, God called me on a five-day fast. And I was going to preach somewhere that weekend. And God, on like, I uh, can't remember what day it was. But he said, fast for five days and I'll do something special. And um, 
Monday, man, that was tough. Tuesday, tough. Wednesday, I think we canceled church because there was a rainstorm that came. And Brother Caleb, I started craving five guys. All right, crave. I'm talking five guys was in Lufkin. I started craving five guys. And I had two more days left, Sister Long. And I'm telling you, a craving got on me so bad that I told my wife, I said, we're going to five. I couldn't handle it. We're going to five guys in Lufkin. I drive 30 minutes to get to five guys. And their credit card machine went down. And they wasn't accepting no credit cards. And I didn't carry cash. And I said, can you please just let me write you an IOU? I work at Tipton. Like, call me. I'll pay you when it, nope, nope. Can't have, I'm like, oh, my Lord. We go to every ATM trying to get cash. No cash. Our card wouldn't work because our bank was in Nacogdoches. So the next best thing was Whataburger. Victoria really needs a five guys. That'll stay in business. It's good enough to stay in business. They ain't going to be like Arby's and shut down or whatever that other taco place was. So I said, let's go to Whataburger. Brother, we went to Whataburger. I ate my burger mad. They didn't, put man- they didn't put mustard on it. They actually put mayonnaise, and I was so mad I didn't even get them to go fix it. I ate that burger mad. It was disgusting. And at the end, I said, that's what I get for chasing a craving whenever I knew what God had said. Here's the thing about cravings in the world it always tastes in your mind a lot better than what it actually tastes and when you get done you're going to be mad you're going to be upset and you're not going to be fulfilled why because you know that the only thing that will satisfy your soul is God oh taste and see that the Lord is good But you're not going to taste unless you come into his house and sit at his table and say, God, whatever you're serving today, I'm going to ingest in my spirit. I'm going to do more than just hear it. I'm going to do more than just touch it. I'm going to let it get in the depths of my soul and my heart. Hallelujah. Amen. I want more of God. That's my goal. That's my goal. I want more of God. Thank you for this church. Thank you for the response. Again, thank you, brother and sister Long. Hopefully they'll be back soon. Amen. I liked what I felt here this morning. Good to have y'all and y'all's family. Amen. Clark and Trantry, I've missed y'all so much. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, Clark has graduated from kindergarten since the last time we saw him, and he's almost ready to get his driver's license and start driving his mom and daddy around while they preach. Amen. Brother Caleb, Sister Hannah Few, you'll always be a part of us here, brother. We love y'all so much. They come back to visit this weekend. Thank y'all for coming and visiting us. Amen with their beautiful family. And uh, Sister Allison, we love and appreciate you so much. Thank you for coming back and visiting us. Amen. Can we stand right now all over the house? Amen. I think it's appropriate before we're dismissed. Let's give the Lord a good hand clap of praise. God, I thank you today, Lord. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your promises, O Lord. In Jesus' holy name. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, There will be no service tonight. Everybody be safe. Uh, The storm, be safe. We are planning on having service Wednesday. But here's the good thing. We've got a new outer shell that's bigger, better, stronger. And we've got insurance now. Amen. So, God forbid if something does happen, hey, at least we got insurance and we pray that they pay this time. Amen. God bless you. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. Greet one another in the fear of the love of the Lord.